Well, I, uh, I'm excited for us to show Tony a couple of things here because never has Tony ever <laughs> seen some of the wrestling that we're going to be watching today. You know, when, when WCW went down, he quit watching wrestling until 2017, Dylan. So he I was going to ask, actually, I was thinking about this, uh, last night of like, when, when did he stop Tony? Like, and you were done, done. You never like. It would, if it came on, would you just shut it off blatantly? Well, it, it never really came on. I just yeah. didn't go to the channel. I, um, okay. there, there was one time that, and I've mentioned this before that Scott Hudson got in touch with me. He said, I don't know how Scott knew this. I guess Scott is a stooge too, but Scott said, Hey, Bischoff is going to be on raw tonight. Wow. You've got to watch that. So I said, okay, I turned it on. I saw Bischoff come out and then I turned it off. And that was the only time I watched a wrestling show until Royal Rumble 2017. When Conrad and I started doing the podcast again, Conrad said, probably yeah. be a good idea for you to start watching this stuff again. And, and so, did you, uh, did the love come back pretty quickly? Uh, would you say, or was it, did it take a bit? It took a bit. Yeah, it really did. Yeah. Because of the change in times. Yeah. Yeah. Because also we were doing, uh, we were doing a podcast at that time where Conrad would ask me stories about yeah. WCW, which yep. I didn't really remember, nor did I really want to talk about that much. Uh, and he kind of brought it out of me and it took a little while. And, uh, so yeah. And, uh, when I, when I came back and when I started working for, uh, AEW, and I realized how much it had changed. I really got, got into it again. Do you feel okay. yourself comparing? Sorry that I'm turning this into an interview myself here. That's okay. Uh, do you feel yourself comparing? Oh man, this is kind of like in WCW or is it ever like a, you know, back in my day, or do you try your best to not have that mindset? I, I try to my best not have that mindset. Yeah. There's some things that, that bug me. Some little things that bug me, but other than that, I'm really into what we're doing. Yeah. Any, anything that's like, does it ever happen where it's positive? Like, man, just think if we could have done this back then, does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, uh, just some of the, uh, some of the, when I see Kenny Omega at his best. Yeah. Or, uh, like I'll, I'll, I'll still say that the, uh, the revolution that we had right before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I mean, right before the pandemic where the young bucks took on hangman and Kenny was one of the best matches I'd ever seen. Yeah. Ever. Uh, and Kenny has given us some, so many great matches and now I'm more exposed now to the wrestling that they had in Japan than I ever was. Mm -hmm. Thanks to, you know, the forbidden door and th also thanks to Eddie Kingston being with us and showing me some of this. Uh, I, I didn't know that was, that was there and, and that was going on even when I was doing wrestling. So I've been exposed to that. I'm enjoying that a lot more. And, uh, and of course, you know, we're getting exposed to the luchadors and triple a and CMLL. And so I'm enjoying all that as well. Awesome. Good. Well, let's, uh, let's show Tony something he's never seen before. We want you guys to, uh, pull your peacock out and find Monday night raw from September 10th, 2007. That's Monday Night Raw, September 10th, 2007, or as Peacock calls it, season 15, episode 37. That's I season 15, it. episode 37. A lot has changed over there uh, in WWE land, but what hasn't changed, fire up your Peacock, September 10th, 2007, season mm -hmm. 15, episode 37. Mm -hmm. Tony, do we have a special countdown today? We sure do. You ready for it? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Well, happy Valentine's Day, everybody, from your old pal, Lois Rules. I hope you just spend it loving everyone near you. And I lost my train of thought. Oh, shit. <laughs> you want me to keep going? <laughs> oh, Lordy. Okay, what was the whole point of this for me to say... Happy Valentine's Day and push play in three, two, one, play.
How about that? Yes, sir, we promised you a great man here on this show. Hey, Nick Andre, the China Sylvania. Hulkamania is running west. You know, I haven't noticed, but I guess all those Vince McMahon clips are going to be out of the uh, the new opens. I got to start paying attention to them. I thought about that the other day, too. Isn't that kind of weird? Boy, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Right? It's that. Yeah. I I was talking to Landon about that, actually, like, and, and about how, like, it just, yeah, it's just, it's whoever, very odd. Whoever thought it would end like that? Right? Nobody. Yeah. The run would end like that. So. This can't. Man, I just thought about this. Like, this is the biggest night of my career, and it can't be talked about ever anymore. <laughs> it's a race from history. Holy shit! Yeah. I just yeah. realized that now. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you didn't happen, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately. <laughs> so Holy are they gonna, shit! Are, are are they going to take all the Vince McMahon stuff off the? No, they can't do that. Uh, that'd be impossible. Yeah, they can't take it all, but this will never be taught. Man. Oh, this sucks. Guys, <laughs> I just realized how much this sucks now. <laughs> you got redacted, buddy. Yeah. So uh, catch Tony up on, on what the storyline is here as we see Jonathan Coachman handing Vince McMahon. So it was revealed that uh, Vince had an illegitimate child and leading up to this, that it would be revealed. Now, this was in Green Bay, Wisconsin, which was my wrestling hometown. Uh, and it was rumored obviously for months and months that it was going to be Mr. Kennedy, uh, Ken Kennedy, Ken Anderson, and who was out with injury at the time. Um, and he's from green Bay, right? He's from green Bay. So everything, everything kind of made sense. Yes. Uh, and I think it was, this was shortly after the, the Benoit situation to kind of take the thought of that, uh, away as well. And the Benoit then, stuff happened in June, right? And this is September. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, but it was revealed because remember they were going to do like Vince's funeral that same yes. week, yeah. And so then it came out that that was kind of a hoax thing, and they revealed that he had a son that he didn't know about. Yeah, uh, you know, we used to hear forever that Vince wore a hairpiece, and, and I always would argue that, but I could see where right there you, you would think, yeah, that maybe right on top there, maybe. I mean, we know it's not now, but- yeah. I could be sold on it. What do you think of, uh, this storyline, Tony, can you believe that there was actually an illegitimate son storyline in WWE? This sounds like days of our lives more than WWE. Does it not? Yes. I, I listen, I could believe anything when it comes to wrestling, you know, I could believe any freaking thing. So Jonathan coachman played a heel here. I didn't know that. Yeah, he was a heel pretty regular in almost WWE. yeah, almost almost his whole run he was kind of the the new age like stooge to Vince and and Regal and everything and then even his commentary he was a heelish more heel so. How was he to work with coach? Awesome. He he was so much fun and he was just he got it. Uh he didn't mind being the wily e. coyote to my roadrunner you know, weekly, literally we do stuff every week and it was him just getting, getting it, it, everything turned around on him. So it was, it was a really, him and I were always, always very, very, very good friends. 